Hey everybody, I am back from a four day work trip to Portland where it was very nice to enjoy some professional development and mostly sleep in my own bed uninterrupted, uh, which was just fantastic. Um, and I'm still recovering from that excitement. Um, but today I need to process a whole bunch of food. <laughs> uh, before I left, we got some fresh produce from a friend's garden and I need to either cook it or I need to freeze it so I can use it later and enjoy this gift. So come along with me today as I work through all of this stuff. Our friend gave us these two spaghetti squash and butternut squash, um, and so I want to use them up. So let's get started on the spaghetti squash. First, I'm going to add in a cup of water into the Instant Pot, and then I'm going to just pierce the squash all over with a fork um, and then put it right in. And this one is, they're small enough that both of them can fit in the Instant Pot. And these I will put in the Instant Pot on high pressure for 11 minutes. And I will ride the struggle bus while I'm doing it. I've got a dessert I need to make for a church Halloween party tonight. So I am going to preheat this and get started on that after I eat my breakfast. I'm making a pumpkin pie dump cake thing. I've never made anything like this before. So I've got a can of pumpkin pie puree, a can of evaporated milk, and add three eggs to the bowl, one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and then whisk that all together really well. Then you just pour it into a greased baking dish. Then melt two sticks of butter. Next, you're gonna get your spice yeah. cake open it up and you're just going to sprinkle it all over the top of your like liquid pumpkin mixture. And with that melted butter, you're just going to drizzle it all over the cake. And it cooks for about an hour. And now I'm going to exercise while the baby takes a nap and my husband's out on a walk with one kid and the other kid is happily playing. I love Saturday mornings like this where I feel like I'm getting a lot done and the kids haven't watched any cartoons. It's just, just feels good. It feels right. And these spaghetti squash are super done. Yeah, nice. I left these out a little long and so much moisture came out of them. So now I cleaned it up and I'm going to cut them open. First, I will scrape out the seeds because we don't want to eat those. And now I will gently kind of separate the like meat of the spaghetti squash from the side um, because this stood for a little bit, it's pretty mushy. Um, so I'm trying not to like bring in the outer part of it into <laughs> the spaghetti, um, but this looks pretty good. I decided to make some baked fritters with these that I found on Pinterest and I've never had fritters, so I'm excited to try them. In a bowl, you will mix two cups of cooked spaghetti squash, an egg, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried parsley, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a pinch of black pepper, um, and half a cup of panko. Then you'll add half a cup of Parmesan and a fourth of a cup of flour. Then you're going to mix that all together really well so that it's just evenly distributed. Then on sprayed parchment paper, you'll put down a few tablespoons of your like batter at a time um, and then just flatten them down. And then you can put them in the oven for 450. The recipe said about 10 minutes on each side, but they seemed kind of goopy still. So mine ended up being about 15 to 20 minutes on each side. This is good. I'm a fan. Very good and savory. I don't know that I've ever eaten a fritter, let alone made one. Pretty proud. I will make these again. This is delicious. You better slow down. Don't eat it all at once. Mmm. You're down in this sucker. Uh, yeah. Mmm. Uh, uh, these orange bell peppers were 50 cents a piece at Winco this week. So I got a bunch. There's more in the fridge. And I'm going to chop them up and have them in the freezer for my like, breakfast hashes that I make. I have run out of time to finish tonight, so I'll put these away and then I will keep prepping with all my stuff tomorrow. 
I got these two butternut squashes from my neighbor. Um, I had texted her and asked her if she wanted some of the butterscotch bread that I made a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago. And she said, yes, but only if I can give you some vegetables from my sister's garden that she sent home with me. And so she gave me these in addition to um, some other stuff. So we are, we already ate the spaghetti squash that she gave us. It was delicious. Um, but I'm gonna, my husband doesn't like squash because his dad traumatized them with squash, squash when they were little, putting it in everything that it shouldn't have been in. <laughs> um, so my husband doesn't like squash. My kids are just annoyingly picky and my baby will most likely eat this. So I'm not ready to make a butternut squash soup yet. So I'm going to cut these ends off. Um, oh my gosh, what's it called? You know, take the skin off, <laughs> peel it, there we go. Um, and then dice it and pop these suckers in the freezer for when I am ready. Also, I don't exactly know anything about knives, but this Cutco cheese knife is like the best thing in my kitchen. I ended up with a good amount um, that I am going to now flash freeze and save for later when I'm ready to cook the soup. Only takes a few hours for it to freeze and now I can take it out, scrape it up and put it in a gallon bag for the freezer. Freezers are the best. My life changed in my frugality once we got a little deep freezer. And wouldn't you know it, our beef shipment came in while I was doing all of this prepping. Mosita Market is a Utah farm, and I get a 20-pound shipment of ground beef every 90 days. Um, it's a lot of beef for my family. We don't go through that much in 90 days, but it was on a really good promotion when I ordered it. And I've been glad to know that I always have this available for my family. I just pack them up in a reusable like grocery bag and then I put them in our little deep freezer. I put the newest ones on the bottom so that I'm using the oldest ones first. My husband's coworker sent us home with just a massive zucchini. At the same time, we got the butternut squash and the spaghetti squash. Um, so I need to do something with it. I've I shredded it all up the other night and now I'm going to use up some of the pumpkin that I have in my pantry that I bought last year that I would like to <laughs> rotate and go through. Um, so I'm going to make a really yummy pumpkin zucchini muffin. And then maybe it sounds weird, but it is so good. And my oldest daughter just gobbles these up because they are delicious and I put white chocolate chips in them. I'm excited to share this one with you. I will put the link for this recipe and all the other recipes that we've I've used in this one um, down below. So make sure to take a look at those and support the bloggers who very willingly share their delicious recipes with us. I doubled this recipe, so I added two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, um, a half a teaspoon of sea salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then the two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, and then I mixed it all up. And I added two cups of pumpkin puree and a cup of raw maple syrup, and then I melted uh, it called for a cup of melted coconut oil. I think you could get away with less. Mine were kind of greasy at the bottoms at the end. Doubling this recipe called for four eggs. So I added those to the mix and blended it well. Next, I added a cup and a half of shredded zucchini from our gigantic dang zucchini. And it doesn't even really make much of a dent in the amount that we have. <laughs> And I added about a third of a cup of white chocolate chips. These really make it so, so good. Then of course you're gonna add your dry ingredients to the wet um, and just combine them until they're like just moistened. Um, basically you don't wanna overmix it or they won't be as fluffy and delicious. This makes a solid 24 
muffins though I think you could stretch that out and do quite a bit more of just like regular size muffins. I had to go back and kind of add extra to these, um, but they turned out to be a good size muffin. These will bake in the oven at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes, just depending on your oven. The kids are in bed now, so I decided to get the Costco eggs and put them in their containers. And why is this so satisfying to do this? I don't know, but it just feels so good. All right, they are done and they are delicious. I love this recipe. And minus the ones my husband and I already ate, we're gonna pop the rest in the freezer for some easy snacks and breakfasts. Thanks for hanging in there with me. That was a lot of food prepping. I'm tired, um, <laughs> but we do what we gotta do so that we can save some money and feed our families. Thanks for following along on this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you continue to join me on our frugal living journey. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks.